Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be giving a recap of my first semester of medical school and also sharing some of the resources that helped me the most. Um, so let's get started. So um, let's see. Recapping this semester, I was not expecting school to be as tough as it was. Um, not necessarily because any of the content is particularly difficult. It's just that it's just so much to learn and you have to learn it really quickly and kind of get it down packed. Um, and it can be a lot. It's a little bit of an adjustment. Um Especially like for me, I hadn't been in school in a little while. So just kind of getting back into the swing of things and like finding what does work and what doesn't work um, and trying to just navigate that. Like, for example, um, I know that I don't do well without sleep anymore. When I was in college, I used to be able to stay up until like 4 a.m., doing productive work and then go to sleep and wake up and kind of do it again. Um, I could function off of four hours of sleep and be tired, but still functional. Um, my body doesn't work like that anymore. Um, so I know like especially this last exam that we had, I tried to study for an all-nighter. I tried to stay up and say, oh, I'm just going to push through. I want to get through X, Y, and Z tonight. And I couldn't, I, I didn't make it. And then I think I stayed up until 3 a.m. and the next morning I woke up feeling sick. And that happens to me a lot. Um, I tend to somaticize, <laughs> new term that we learned this semester, um, I tend to somaticize my stress. And so when I start feeling really stressed and overwhelmed, it usually manifests in um, like a sore throat or a headache or just like not generally feeling well. And then if it's really bad and my anxiety is really high, it can also manifest in a panic attack. So we know that that's not the road for me to go down. So I try to stick to a really good schedule. And that's my biggest advice about getting through the first semester is like trying to stick to a routine and a schedule. Um, I basically, no matter what's going on, try to be at school no later than 8 30 and then you know I go throughout my day um whether it's lectures or small group um that can like adjust the beginning of my day but usually by we're usually free by about one o'clock um from then on I probably will take a break for lunch and then I study in two hour blocks and then I take a 30 minute break and then study again for two hours. Uh, it's really effective for me. I feel like I get a lot of work done that way. Um, it was actually not a method that I created myself. Um, I met with the education enhancement department here at AUA and they helped me to come up with a plan that works for me. <laughs> I'm more likely to be productive towards the beginning of the day um, just because my mind feels fresh. I feel better. But as I start getting tired, my productivity level goes down. And I think that's pretty normal for everybody. But I know that for me by... 11 o'clock I'm probably beat for the day so anything that I do after that is probably not gonna be anything that I actually retain overall the semester went great um like I said it was difficult it was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be but that's medical school it's difficult um it's a real like I said it's a really big adjustment but with hard work and dedication and just pushing through like I think it's really possible to make it. Um, I guess the greatest thing at the end of the, is that I passed the semester, so yay! I'm promoted to semester two, um, which is great. Uh, even though we have fail, pass, high pass, um, and honors, you still have to reach a certain threshold to pass, so you have to get, for us it was 70, um, overall to pass, and that includes, so it's like your your overall, um, your three test scores from the semester, and then you have your ICM grade. Um, so all together, the first semester makes up about a little under 50% of our, our grade for the entire first year, and then second semester will be the, make up the rest of it. So um, 
you have to average a 70% to consider to, to be considered to have, you know, successfully passed um, semester one. However, uh, they and those everyone who gets a 70 or above will be automatically promoted to semester two. Um, they let everybody else who has like a 69 and below kind of make a decision. Um, I don't really remember what the threshold is for dismissal, but that is also possible. But the in-between people, um, they let them decide if they would like to move forward and, you know, attempt to make a 70 for the year if they think that that is something that they want to do. Or you can choose to just repeat the semester right away. Um, I'm not sure if this is something that is different for us because we were the first class that was fully remote. But that's what they did um, this year. Uh, like I was in the class that got automatically promoted. But I know that that wasn't necessarily the case for everybody. So everybody just has to make their own decision. And even if I... Even if you are automatically promoted, um, like they'll they send out like some statistics to tell you, like, if you're here, this is the average of, you know, based on our our recent statistics, like how likely it is that you'll pass the year. Um, and they kind of base that based on like who should be promoted and who shouldn't. So. I mean, I, I think everybody has to at the end of the day, I think medical school is a lot of just like making sure that you are knowing what's good for you and like trying to tune out the rest of it and just like making the best decisions for yourself. Um, so I'm moving on to semester two. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and I hope that some of these methods that I'm going to share are helpful to me moving forward. <laughs> um, so let's get into it. This is probably my most requested um, video topic, and I know I've been holding out on you guys for a really long time. Part of it was that after my first exam, things just kind of got really crazy really fast, and so um, making videos was not my highest priority. Um, and then also, I think it's better for me to come from a perspective where these methods are actually like tried and, and true rather than me being in the middle of it and trying to tell you like, well, this works this week and this doesn't um, because things do change and I, something might be working for me for a little bit and then doesn't work anymore. So, you know, Things vary, and again, it's really about like figuring out what works best for you. I think probably one of the best things that we did at the beginning of the semester was to figure out what our individual learning styles were. So um, again, we had a presentation with the Education Enhancement Department, and they made us basically take this quiz about learning styles. Um, and so they, you know, kind of advise us to, you know, play to your strengths and what that means. So my biggest thing is reading and writing, um, which I already know. So I'm a big reader, um, which is <laughs> not a anything new. If you guys have been following my blog for a while, um, I love to read and I'm really sad that I don't have time for personal reading anymore, but, um, I learned the best from reading our textbooks and reading like text material. And then after that, I'm also kind of like um, a trial by fire type of person. Like I need to read it and then do it for myself. And then those things will like kind of, those are how like my biggest things. Um, I forgot what my third one was, but those are the two biggest ones for me. Um, and so that being said, I had to choose study methods that were incorporating those learning styles and playing to my strengths. So what are the biggest resources that I used to study in first semester? So my biggest resource, like I'm not going to lie to you, was the material from the school, which is the textbooks, even the lectures, like I went through all of that stuff. Um, it may not have been, you know, the only thing that I used, but I definitely did do my readings, even if it was just skimming through things. Um, I always did. I always did the reading like that was something that was really important to me. And it also was really helpful because on top of like the lectures and hearing the material from the professors and, li and lo looking at their slides and their notes or whatever, backing that up with reading was really important to me. Um, 
so that's that was my biggest thing. That's always where I started. Um, I think again, one of the things that I learned from the education enhancement department is that you probably should do about four passes of information in order for you to really retain um, that information. And so typically like lecture is my first pass of the information, then I'll read, that's probably two, um, and then three and four vary. So for me, again, it depends on the topic, depends on the content. Um, I am okay at biochemistry. I kind of get it. It's pretty much a story. So as long as I can figure out the story and where the process is going, like biochemistry is not that bad for me. Um, but reading was really helpful for me in biochemistry. Whereas when we got to neuro, reading was not as helpful for me. Um, so I relied a lot more on outside resources as far as like videos go and just hearing um, different sources like talk about things really help solidify for me. Um, so again, like these things may vary from block to block. They can vary from system to system. Literally, it just depends on like what the content is that you're being thrown. And like sometimes you just have to handle that content differently. So um, yeah, I think lecture is always my biggest thing. Um, after lectures, like I said, my second pass is usually reading the book. After that, um, it's probably a tie between Anki, which honestly, like I will sing Anki's praises all day long. I don't know how um, I would do med school without Anki. <laughs> um, and I, I know there's a lot of like divisive attitudes about Anki. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, I think it's great. Um, Anki, if you guys don't know, is a digital flashcard system, um, which is based on the idea of spaced learning. So you will look at a card and get it right or wrong and you'll keep reviewing it. And then once that is gone for the day, so you typically review a card like twice in one day when it's a new card um, and then that gets put away and they will bring it back to you in rotation in a certain amount of time to help make sure that you're retaining the information and so just after a lecture um, I will add to my ongoing Anki deck and I have a, diff a bunch of different sources for Anki decks. Um, people talk about Zonki. I've used Zonki cards. I've made my own cards, gotten cards from upper semester students at my school. So, you know, I think that that's, those are all really helpful. Um, I will combine them and pull things. I think some decks are better in some subjects than others. And so I will pull things um, from maybe Zonki and I feel like Zonki did a good job on them. Or I'll pull things from, you know, an upper med student or just make my own. And again, like these things are very tailored to you. So I personally feel like the Zonky Ducks are great. They're awesome, but they're not necessarily the full story all the time or the things that you personally struggle with remembering. So I always add things that I personally want to remember to my Anki Ducks so that I can, you know, get those facts in the, in the rotation. Um, so I typically do anywhere... So again, like this is me and I'm kind of a crazy person, I know. So typically um, at the beginning of the semester, I started doing 50 new cards a day um, as the semester went on and I had like more reviews to do. And as we're learning more and more material, I upped that and did about 100 cards a day. Um, and then when it was time to study for the exam, I did probably 150 to 200 new cards a day. Um, so you Again, with Anki, you have like a new card deck and the reviews. So in addition to however many cards that you need to review for the day, you have new cards that you're learning. Um, so, I mean, that was the method that worked really great for me. I hated myself after the first exam because then I had like... 700 cards due a day because <laughs> I had, you know, reviews plus I'm doing like 150, 200 cards a day. So it built up really quickly. And that's just one of the things about Anki that you have to be careful about is, um, it is actually, it is a commitment. Um, if in order to like actually retain the information in the way that the program is designed for you to do, you have to do Anki every single day. Um, otherwise your reviews will build up to a point you'll mess up your 
your spacing and then your, your reviews will build up to a point where it's just like not manageable. So if you do start using Anki, like please do remember that it is a commitment. Um, there's lots of Anki tutorials all over YouTube, but I can make one if you guys really would like. So just let me know in the comments or let me know on social media, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, but Anki is absolutely wonderful. Um, I probably would not be passing without it. Probably the next resource that I use the most is online videos. Ninja Nerd is my number one. Um, for some reason, Zach explains things in the most like simple, easy way, even if it's the most complicated things. Um, I would not have passed my Arner exam if it wasn't for Ninja Nerd. Um, that's just being honest. Like I was completely lost in the water when it came to neuro. Um, like I said, reading was not helping me because I was just not putting things together. There's just so many little parts and so many tracks and it's just, it was a lot for me. Um, and it wasn't until I sat down and watched like all of the Ninja Nerd videos that I actually like got it and was like, oh, okay. Like I can actually understand it and like build off of this base using the material that, you know, the school has provided. And then, um, in addition to Ninja Nerd, I also really like the Boards and Beyond videos. Um, they're really helpful as well. And I also like that they just kind of cut to the chase and like you get a lot of details and you don't really know what to filter through and Boards and Beyond just tells you like these are the most important things. These are the most testable things. Um, and here's what you should focus on. And I really appreciate that. And um, probably the best thing that I use um, that everyone I've kind of become infamous for in our class is... First aid. Um, this book is a lifesaver. Um, I, I honestly don't know what to tell you. Like every mnemonic that I use, every like easy, simple breakdown of things, like I probably got it from first aid. Um, literally my class makes fun of me and calls me like the first aid guru because I use this book so much um, that I will tell them like, oh yeah, just read this, look at this chart on page, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it'll help you memorize it. Um, I just got it over break. I went and got it spiral bound, which is a lot easier um, just because, you know, you're using it a lot and it's easier to manipulate when it's spiral bound. But um, I have so much to say about first aid. So let me pause for a second. Um, I'm not getting paid by... First Aid or McGraw-Hill to promote this book. So I'm just telling you guys about it because it's something that I found really helpful. So let me explain First Aid to you guys. Okay, so First Aid is a resource that has been created in order to help med students study for step one. Step one is our MBME board exam. We have to take three steps um, in order to become board certified. Okay, so Step one is the exam that you take after your second year. Some med schools do it differently. Um, at AUA, we do after the second year. So while we are in school, we're essentially studying for step one um, in our first two like preclinical years. So this essentially, I was told before I started to kind of treat this like the med student's Bible. Um, and I think that was wonderful advice um, because at the end of the day like your professors who are experts in your field want you to know so much information they have so much to share about their particular subject matter but not all that information is testable and so first aid kind of like cuts through all of that and gets you down to like what's the what are the testable portions these are the things that are high yield that we see questions on all the time that MBME is making questions on all the time and for me that's really important because at the end of the day you want to study as smart and efficiently as possible because like I said there's so much information to learn and so first aid kind of cuts through all of the extra and gets you right where you need to be. Um, and for AUA students in particular, I know different schools have different policies. For here at AUA, like all of our exams are administered by MBME. So we don't have like little exams. Um, like we have smaller exams that don't necessarily, that don't count towards our grade, 
but help you kind of like understand where you are with the material. We call those formative exams. So we do have some of those scattered throughout the semester. Um, I think we had four in semester one. I think it was four. Um, and they're just kind of scattered in between the blocks. It's just kind of a thing, uh, something to like help you see like where you are, what your strengths and weaknesses are. And those are like our professors extracting information that we've learned and saying like, hey, here are some questions that we think are important um, that they either make up or get from some resources. Um, and our actual exams that count for a grade, our CAS exams are administered by NBME. Like we have to go through NBME secure portal in order to access those exams. And so that is really important because the, the it's, it's essentially old step one questions that we get in our exams. And so first aid kind of helps you, like I said, filter through what's important, what's not. And like you get down to the nitty gritty and these are exactly what the questions are going to be looking for. It's been super helpful for me. Um, so like I said, probably around my fourth pass of information, I'll just go through and kind of like read the brief review. So that's the thing that I do want to say is like, first aid is a review book. It's, it's mostly built for people who have gone through the preclinical years and are ready to take the exam and are, are in that study period. Um, so how I use it, I don't study from this book. I wanted that to be very clear. Like, I do not study from this book. I use it as a review. And in addition to review, I'll go through and add things that I want to remember about particular subjects, whether it's a mnemonic or something that a professor mentioned or something that an outside resource, Ninja Nerd, Boards and Beyond, whatever. If it's something that they mentioned that I want to remember about that particular topic, I will write it down. Well, I love first aid. Like I said, it's a really concise review of everything, which is great for your fourth pass because at that point you've kind of learned the information and you just want to like solidify it. Um, between first aid and Anki, those are probably like, I, I don't know how anybody does med school without them. Um, but of course, like I said, you have to do what works for you. So this works for me. But again, I said my main learning styles are reading and trial by fire. So this is super important for me. Um, the last thing that I think is really helpful, um, again, which was suggested to me and actually really worked since I am a trial by fire person, um, is doing practice questions while you're learning material. So I know that that sounds insane um, because you just kind of want to get things down before you're like asked questions about them and have to, you know, go through the whole critical thinking process of answering, especially an MBME question. But questions for me were super helpful. Um, so what the way that I build my study schedule, I try to do like in the beginning, like when we're first learning material, I'll probably do like 10 to 15 questions a day and slowly build that up to maybe like five to 10 towards the end of each of my study blocks during the day so that I might be getting 30, 40 questions. Um, for me, doing the questions that way is super helpful because again like it's active learning of the material you're looking and seeing like what is important what are they going to ask me in a question what do I need to pay particular attention to and also like when you get questions wrong and you read the explanation of like why your answer was wrong that's that's learning um and that's really important and that's one of the like biggest things that I've heard a lot of um, upper med students say is the same thing like do your questions and then when you get a question wrong you know you learn from it and then you won't get that question wrong again which you know sometimes you might get it wrong again but if you're practicing throughout your whole block before your exam then by the time it comes to exam time I found that I'm a little bit less stressed because the questions that I get on the exam 
I haven't necessarily seen them before, but I'm so used to doing questions that I don't have that like major test anxiety. And I know that Again, test anxiety is a whole different thing. I could probably do a whole separate video on that, but that's just something that I find really helpful. Um, I know a lot of med students have talked about like doing a questions method, especially when you start getting towards second year and like going through U World and all of that. Um, for me, I kind of pull questions from everywhere. I've gotten a lot of question banks from. Um, our upper med students who are willing to help. My peer mentor gave me a bunch of stuff to help me study. The school provides USMLE Easy Access, which is essentially the same thing as RX. Um, it's like a similar setup, but RX has like the bricks. USMLE Easy is not that um, sophisticated, but it's essentially the same thing. So it's free and easy to access through the library at the school and that has thousands of questions you can filter you can make your own quizzes um however many questions you want you can filter by subjects you can filter by system um you can ask it for only easy questions or hard questions um something in between and i think it's super super useful in addition like a lot of the textbooks have questions as well so like I know anatomy questions pretty much everyone uses grays for physiology a lot of people use guy in um, those are textbooks that have questions um, for biochem Lippincott has a lot of questions um, so it's just about like and the textbook questions are not MBME questions, but they're still helpful because you're actively learning with the material and they do mostly have explanations. So again, like you won't get that question wrong again. Um, so those are probably like the biggest things for me is lectures and the books, um, doing outside videos with Ninja Nerd and Boards and Beyond. Also, um, Anki and first aid um, and then of questions of course so I think that that's basically how I set myself up for success um, if you have any questions please let me know reach out to me I'm more than happy to explain something further is one thing I do want to say is that I made a dedicated effort in my first semester not to purchase resources Part of that is because you're still trying to figure things out. And so some of these like question banks and things like AMBOSS and UWorld and even RX and all these resources that you'll hear about that get thrown at you, especially when you first come in and they're like, oh, we have this discount, we have this and blah, blah, blah. They can be pretty pricey. And um sometimes the way that they word their questions or their explanations may not be something that you find useful. And so I think like pretty much every school has like a bank of, of questions kind of floating around between like the upper meds. Like it's honestly the upper med students are a gold mine. Just about asking about for what you need. Um, I think our upper meds were super, super helpful. So if you guys happen to see this and I haven't told you already, thank you guys so much. Um, like I said, my peer mentor gave me so much stuff that she used to study. Um, and every upper med that I ever came across was always like, oh, well, are you using this? Do you have this? Whatever. Um, so I made, like I said, I made a concerted effort not to purchase anything. Um, for AUA students specifically, like I said, the library gives us access to USMLE Easy. I signed up for it in the first week. It was my main question bank for the entire semester. And I haven't even touched probably like, I want to say like a not even a quarter of those questions have I gone through. So it'll be a long time resources that I think is useful. So I don't necessarily feel the need to purchase 
um, an Amboss or a U World or an RX right now because, like I said, like we're still trying to figure things out, still trying to figure out what works for you. As I move on into this next semester, I'm not going to purchase anything. In my, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, as I move on to the second semester, I'm not going to purchase anything. Um, as far as I can say right now, it is important to not feel pressured to use one resource or another and to definitely just take especially like the first two to three weeks of your semester figuring out what works for you like you'll get so much stuff thrown at you I have a external hard drive full of stuff that I've gotten from other people I have like so much so many things like full of of things that people have sent me shared resources that we get from just classmates oh this worked for me hey, I have this, I got this from another school, whatever the case may be. So those things definitely happen. And so I would, my advice, (laughs) you don't have to take it because there's plenty of people that definitely have purchased Amboss or purchased RX um, and felt that it was helpful for them. So that's great. I personally, again, like if you've been following me for a while, I like to be a little bit more frugal about things, especially things that are, um, not saying that there it's, I just like to be a little bit more frugal. And so as I continue to figure it out, like I think in second year, I probably will purchase like a U world or an emboss or something just to help increase, um, my test prep for step one, but we're kind of not at that stage right now. And if I have access to MBME questions and a lot of questions that I can go through, then that's all that I really need. (laughs) So yeah, these are the things that really helped me this semester and I'm moving on and I'm doing well and I'm feeling great and confident about semester two. So I hope that, you know, if anybody is looking for advice that this was a helpful video for you, please let me know. Um, If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Either send me something on here via comments or DM me on any of my social media. I'm pretty responsive. um, But again, like, I am a busy med student, so sometimes I do miss things, but I do get back to you as soon as I can. So I hope this helped, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and comment to let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get regular updates when I post new videos. For more content from Cocktails with Kyra, be sure to follow me on social media and visit my website, cocktailswithkyra.com.